The ancient Romans developed the Roman hand abacus, a portable, but less capable, base 10 version of earlier abacuses like those used by the Greeks and Babylonians. It was the first portable calculating device for engineers, merchants and presumably tax collectors. It greatly reduced the time needed to perform the basic operations of arithmetic using Roman numerals. As Karl Menninger says on page 315 of his book, for more extensive and complicated calculations, such as those involved in Roman land surveys, there was, in addition to the hand abacus, a true reckoning board with unattached counters or pebbles. The Etruscan cameo and the Greek predecessors, such as the Salamis tablet and the Darius vase, give us a good idea of what it must have been like, although no actual specimens of the true Roman counting board are known to be extant. But language, the most reliable and conservative guardian of a past culture, has come to our rescue once more. Above all, it has preserved the fact of the unattached counters so faithfully that we can discern this more clearly than if we possessed an actual counting board. What the Greeks called cephoi, the Romans called calculi. The Latin word calx means pebble or gravel stone. Calculi are thus little stones used as counters. Both the Roman abacus and the Chinese suanpan have been used since ancient times. With one bead above and four below the bar, the systematic configuration of the Roman abacus is coincident to the modern Japanese soroban, although the soroban is historically derived from the suanpan. Topic. Layout The late Roman hand abacus shown here as a reconstruction contains seven longer and seven shorter grooves used for whole number counting, the former having up to four beads in each, and the latter having just one. The rightmost two grooves were for fractional counting. The abacus was made of a metal plate where the beads ran in slots. The size was such that it could fit in a modern shirt pocket. O, 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 X, C, 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 X, I, S, O, 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 the lower groove marked I indicates units, x tens, and so on up to millions. The beads in the upper shorter grooves denote fives, five units, five tens, etc., essentially in a bi-quinary coded decimal place value system. Computations are made by means of beads which would probably have been slid up and down the grooves to indicate the value of each column. The upper slots contained a single bead while the lower slots contained four beads, the only exceptions being the two rightmost columns, column 2 marked, and column 3 with three symbols down the side of a single slot or beside three separate slots with 3 or S or a symbol like the pound sign but without the horizontal bar beside the top slot, a backwards C beside the middle slot and a 2 symbol beside the bottom slot, depending on the example abacus and the source which could be Friedlein, Menninger or Ifra. These latter two slots are for mixed base math, a development unique to the Roman hand abacus described in following sections. The longer slot with five beads below the position allowed for the counting of one twelfth of a whole unit called an uncia from which the English words inch and ounce are derived, making the abacus useful for Roman measures and Roman currency. The first column was either a single slot with four beads or three slots with one, one and two beads respectively top to bottom. In either case, three symbols were included beside the single slot version or one symbol per slot for the three slot version. Many measures were aggregated by twelfths. Thus the Roman pound libra consisted of twelve ounces uncia, one uncia. Topic. 28 grams. A measure of volume congius, consisted of twelve hemine one hemina. 0.273 liters. The Roman foot pays, was 12 inches uncia, 1 uncia equals 2.43 centimeters. The actus, the standard furrow length when plowing, was 120 peds. There were however other measures in common use, for example the sextarius was 2 hemine. The as, the principal copper coin in Roman currency, was also divided into 12 uncia. Again, the abacus was ideally suited for counting currency. 
Topic: <laughs> Symbols and usage. The first column was arranged either as a single slot with three different symbols or as three separate slots with one, one and two beads or counters respectively and a distinct symbol for each slot. It is most likely that the rightmost slot or slots were used to enumerate fractions of an uncia and these were, from top to bottom, one half s, one quarter s and one twelfth s of an uncia. The upper character in this slot or the top slot where the rightmost column is three separate slots is the character most closely resembling that used to denote a samuncha or one twenty-fourth. The name samuncha denotes one half of an uncia or one twenty-fourth of the base unit, the as. Likewise, the next character is that used to indicate a sicilicus or one forty-eighth of an as, which is one quarter of an uncia. These two characters are to be found in the table of Roman fractions on page 75 of Graham Flegg's book. Finally, the last or lower character is most similar but not identical to the character in Flegg's table to denote 1 144th of an as, the Domitio Sextula, which is the same as 1 12th of an uncia. This is however even more strongly supported by Gottfried Friedlein in the table at the end of the book which summarizes the use of a very extensive set of alternative formats for different values including that of fractions. In the entry in this table numbered 14 referring back to zoo 48, he lists different symbols for the samuncha 1 24th, the sicilicus 1 48th, the sextula 1 72nd, the domitia sextula 1 144th, and the scriptulum 1 288th. Of prime importance, he specifically notes the formats of the samuncha, sicilicus and sextula as used on the Roman bronze abacus. Auf dem Chernon abacus. The samuncha is the symbol resembling a capital. S. But he also includes the symbol that resembles a numeral 3 with horizontal line at the top, the whole rotated 180 degrees. It is these two symbols that appear on samples of abacus in different museums. The symbol for the Sicilicus is that found on the abacus and resembles a large right single quotation mark spanning the entire line height. The most important symbol is that for the sextula, which resembles very closely a cursive digit 2. Now, as stated by Friedlein, this symbol indicates the value of 1 72nd of an as. However, he stated specifically in the penultimate sentence of section 32 on page 23, the two beads in the bottom slot each have a value of 1 72nd. This would allow this slot to represent only 1 72nd i.e. 1 6th times 1 12th with one bead or 1 36th i.e. 2 6th times 1 12th equals 1 3rd times 1 12th with two beads of an uncia respectively. This contradicts all existing documents that state this lower slot was used to count thirds of an uncia i.e. 1 3rd and 2 thirds times 1 12th of an as. This results in two opposing interpretations of this slot, that of Friedlein and that of many other experts such as Ifra, and Menninger who propose the one and two-thirds usage. There is however a third possibility. If this symbol refers to the total value of the slot i.e. 1 72nd of an as, then each of the two counters can only have a value of half this or 1 144th of an as or 1 12th of an uncia. This then suggests that these two counters did in fact count twelfths of an uncia and not thirds of an uncia. Likewise, for the top and upper middle, the symbols for the samuncha and sicilicus could also indicate the value of the slot itself and since there is only one bead in each, would be the value of the bead also. This would allow the symbols for all three of these slots to represent the slot value without involving any contradictions. A further argument which suggests the lower slot represents twelfths rather than thirds of an uncia is best described by the figure below. The diagram below assumes for ease that one is using fractions of an uncia as a unit value equal to 1, 1. If the beads in the lower slot of column I represent thirds, then the beads in the three slots for fractions of 1 twelfth of an uncia cannot show all values from 1 twelfth of an uncia to 11 twelfths of an uncia. In particular, it would not be possible to represent 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths and 5 twelfths. Furthermore, this arrangement would allow for seemingly unnecessary values of 13 twelfths, 14 twelfths and 17 twelfths. Even more significant, it is logically impossible for there to be a rational progression of arrangements of the beads in step with unit increasing values of twelfths. Likewise, if each of the beads in the lower slot is assumed to have a value of one-sixth of an uncia, there is again an irregular series of values available to the user, no possible value of one-twelfth and an extraneous value of thirteen-twelfths. 
It is only by employing a value of 1 twelfth for each of the beads in the lower slot that all values of twelfths from 1 twelfth to 11 twelfths can be represented and in a logical ternary, binary, binary progression for the slots from bottom to top. This can be best appreciated by reference to the figure below. Alternative usages of the beads in the lower slot It can be argued that the beads in this first column could have been used as originally believed and widely stated, i.e. as one half, one quarter and one third and two thirds, completely independently of each other. However this is more difficult to support in the case where this first column is a single slot with the three inscribed symbols. To complete the known possibilities, in one example found by this author, the first and second columns were transposed. It would not be unremarkable if the makers of these instruments produced output with minor differences, since the vast number of variations in modern calculators provide a compelling example. What can be deduced from these Roman abacuses, is the undeniable proof that Romans were using a device that exhibited a decimal, place value system, and the inferred knowledge of a zero value as represented by a column with no beads in a counted position. Furthermore, the biquinary nature of the integer portion allowed for direct transcription from and to the written Roman numerals. No matter what the true usage was, what cannot be denied by the very format of the abacus is that if not yet proven, these instruments provide very strong arguments in favor of far greater facility with practical mathematics known and practiced by the Romans in this author's view. The reconstruction of a Roman hand abacus in the cabinet 1, supports this. The replica Roman hand abacus at 2, shown alone here 3, plus the description of a Roman abacus on page 23 of 4 provides further evidence of such devices. References Further reading Stevenson, Stephen K. July 7, 2010, Ancient Computers, IEEE Global History Network, retrieved 2 July 2011 Stevenson, Stephen K. 2011, Ancient Computers, Part 1, Rediscovery, Amazon. Com, ASIN B004RH3J7S External links iPhone simulation of Roman abacus